My name is Kainto on the Tech Pro, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to migrate Microsoft SQL Server database to MySQL database very easily in just four steps. This is necessary because if you are used to building Microsoft applications and you want to build Java applications or PHP applications that use MySQL database, you actually don't need to build a new database. You can just migrate what you have in Microsoft SQL Server all the way to MySQL. So let me show you how to do it. If you are just joining me for the first time, subscribe to my channel, hit that subscribe button below and activate the notification. The reason is because if you follow short lessons like this every week, most likely in six months, you will never can tell how good you are in programming and databases and in all these technical things. So hit the subscribe button if you have challenges. Do leave me a comment. I'm going to personally respond to you because this is what I do. So let's get started. So now MySQL is free. Microsoft SQL Server is also free, at least for now as a developer. So there is a page. If you go to this page, you can find the link in the description box. You can download the free one, the Express edition. You can download it. You can also download the developer edition. All of them are free. Also, if you go to MySQL website, you can also download MySQL. So you have uh, uh, MySQL, uh, uh, you have MySQL Workbench, you have MySQL installer for Windows, download them and install. So right now, we are going to follow the step by step. We are going to create a database. We are going to do it right from the scratch, create a database, create an ODBC data source in Windows and then open Workbench and then perform the migration. So let's start with the first step. I'm going to open Management Studio at this point. Uh, so Management Studio, yeah, so Management Studio. So SQL Server Management Studio, I already downloaded and installed. So I'm opening it now. I'm going to just close the browser so that I don't need it at this point. So when uh, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio opens up. We are going to create a database in Microsoft SQL Server and then we are going to uh, migrate this database. I don't want to migrate existing database. Let's follow it starting from the scratch by how to create this database by myself. So while it opens up, um, I'm going to just uh, let's see. All right, so there it goes. All right, so this is my SQL server. I'm going to just connect. When it shows this window, just click on connect. I'm going to just maximize this window. Uh, maybe I'll also keep the steps open. So I'm going to create a new database. Simply go to databases, right click on it and say new database and give it a name. We are going to create one table and one view. One table and one view. All right, so I'm going to call it uh, MIGDB. Let's just call it me DB, That's right? Migration database or something like that. So I'm going to just say, okay, for now there's a default user, there's security, there's login. We are going to talk about this in later. Now this video is about migration. So inside our databases, we have MIG DB. You can see it right here. I'm going to just expand on it and go to tables and I'm going to create a new table that has ID, name, and address. So let's just go to tables, right click and say new table. I'm going to call this table students, right? I'm going to call it students and it has it has a, it will have a column ID name address and this is going to be integer. The name is going to be Vacha and the address is going to be Vacha as well. Okay. I actually would have imported an Excel table, but for now, let's just do it this way. So I'm going to just click on this ID and set it as a primary key. If you look at the, or if you right click on it, you can just see set primary key, the first item on the menu, click on it and just, we can also make it auto increment if we want. So if you want to make it auto increment, just go to, to identity specification and choose yes. At this point, just drop down and choose yes. That is what you should do. And then let's save it as students. So it's going to be a list of students uh, at this point. So I'm going to kind of expand this. Let's go to refresh this so that we can see this table we created. So you can see 
DBOTBL student, okay? So I'm going to maybe add one or two records in it so that we have some records. So I'm going to right click and say edit. That is what I clicked just now so that I could add some uh, data inside. So let's say name. So now we can't enter ID because it's auto increment. So we have kind son. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to just add random names. Just let me just add one more. Okay, so I've created this table called students and I'm going to save. So a view is simply like a stored query. So if you write a query and you save it somewhere so that that query runs and returns the data. So let me just go to views and let's create a new view. If you go to views and just say new view. So a view is simply like a visual table. So it's getting data from table, maybe more than one table, maybe um, one table. So let's use this one and Let's just select only the name. We want the name of all the students. And yes, so I'm going to just save it. And VW students. So you can see select name from TBL, DBO, TL student. So the advantage of Management Studio is that it makes it easy for you to write queries because it's, it will generate some of these things for you easily. All right, so we are done. So at this time, if I if I, if I go to views and then I refresh, you can see DBO, TBL student, uh, VW student. If I just run it by saying select, you see that it will return the names. Why is it doing this? Okay, so it takes some time. Okay, so you see that it executes the query and returns only the names because we selected only the names. So a view helps you to select subsites of the data. Now we are done with step one. We've created our database in MS SQL Server. The next step we are going to continue now is we are going to create an ODBC data source in Windows. So ODBC means Open Database Connectivity. So it helps you to connect between uh, databases from different platforms to create a, a, a kind of a central model, a central um, uh, format to be able to connect with, uh, between different uh, format uh, platforms. So just go to look for ODBC data sources, ODBC data sources. Now there are two of them, make no mistake about it. Don't choose the one that, choose the one that corresponds to your OS. For me, it's 64 bit, so I'm gonna choose 64. So it opens up in my second monitor. So, so you need to go to system DSN, go to system DSN and choose uh, add. So let's add a new one. It always goes to my second monitor and choose SQL server and say, Finish, all right? So let's call it um, migration, migration underscore tutorial. Uh, migration, just any, any description you want there. And the server at this point, you need to be careful. Don't drop down this drop down because it's gonna freeze up. You need to simply go to MS SQL and find the name and find the name of your server because the name of your MS SQL uh, server is what is required at this point. So you need to find the name of the server exactly the way the name is, and that is what you are going to paste in there. So if you go ahead to drop, it, what is going to happen is going to try to search through the, the network, try to make connections to the, to the network, and that is going to take a whole lot of time. So you don't, you don't want to do that. So you can see the name of my server here. I'm just going to copy it, right click and just copy it. And I'm going to come here and just paste it at this point. So and that is fine. So go next and just use Windows NT authentication is fine. Um, Say change. Now this is important. You need to change the default database to the one we want to migrate to, which I called MyDB and go next. Now you need to leave everything for now at defaults and just go ahead to finish. All right, so it takes, let me see, it goes to my second monitor. So you have this, okay, say okay. All right, so we've created a data source name, which is this one. If I go to configure, okay, go next, uh, go next, go next and finish. 
it opens in my second monitor I'm just gonna come here and go to if I go to test data source at this point so it also opens in my second monitor I'm gonna just move it here so it says uh, attempted connection connection was established uh, test completed successfully okay okay so we have migration tutorial created so we've completed step two we've created an ODBC data source now I'm going to close this the next thing now is to open workbench and then we perform the migration so workbench I installed workbench 8.0 CE is free as I used to say is free we are students we are learners uh, you can get things for free so at this point just go to of course start your local instance just click on the local instance of mysql and then i'm going to just connect enter the password when i configured i set up this password so what you are going to do is to go to it's not this uh, that i export or import or whatever it's not under tools that is one thing i see it's on the database on the database and it's on the migration wizard so when you click on migration wizard you are able to perform migration there are some steps you need to follow and below here at the lower left corner you see start migration just click on start migration you are going to make some selections here where is this database coming from it's coming from microsoft sql server database so the database system that is the source where it's coming from is microsoft sql server select it and stored connection there is no stored connection connection method odbc uh, data source that is uh, the that is what you should use and that is the only option uh, there so on the dsn we have a number of dsn but the one we are trying to use is migration tutorial the one we created for this tutorial so um leave blank if already the data source Leave brand if already in the data source. I think it's already in the data source. I think so. So I don't know. So let me just call it. Let me just enter it at once. I would call it Mike DB. I, I can't remember, but let's see. Maybe I'm gonna just check. Let me just check. So let's just make sure so that we don't have any error. So we need to get the data, the name of the database. I'm gonna just drop down. We call it MyDB, so I'm correct. MyDB. So I'm going to say test connection, and you see success connection succeeded. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just go next. Uh, now I, I don't think you see the button I clicked, so I'm going to just kind of restore this so that you see the button I'm going to click. So you can see next at this point. I'm going to click next. All right, let's see what if we can select anything here. Um, okay, targets, uh, parameters, da 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 da. Everything can be the way it is. It's going to be using the password of the MySQL at this point. Default schema, okay, test connection. Let's check. Connection succeeded, okay. So we have tested the ODBC connection succeeded, tested. MySQL it succeeded as well. So I'm gonna go next. So you can see it doing its thing here and uh, it's trying to connect to data source, check everything is perfectly okay. Check target DBMS connection and retrieve schema list from the source. Alright, I'm gonna go to next at this point. Now you can see that it's showing me select the schema you want to migrate. I'm going to just select this one, uh, MIG. That DBO, don't worry about it. It simply means the, the, the database owner or the schema. Um, so you have some options here. It says keep schema as they are. Only one schema, catalog, schema, table, catalog, dot table. DBO, dot table name. Exactly the way it was in MSSQL. So we have DBO, dot uh, table name. So if you go to... This is MSSQL. If you go here, you can see that the table has a name dbo.table name, as you can see. All right, so we are going to leave it exactly the way it is. I'm going to say next. So it's processing and it's importing. Okay, finish performing task. Nice to continue. Okay, so 
you may select the objects to be migrated in the list below. We want to migrate table and we want to migrate the view as well because we have a table and a view. If there is a store procedure, it will also have listed this as a third item and we're also going to migrate it if we need. And it's going to come to MySQL as a stored function. It's all the same. So I'm going to just click on Next. Now migrate, migrate selected object, generate create statement, everything was done. Now this is because it's a very small database and it takes a little time. I'm going to just click on next and okay so mm, nice okay okay so now this is actually when it's doing the migration the migration is not been done and now it's uh, connect your database uh, create scripts okay nice um, okay so everything migrate executed successfully and you go nice as well uh, nice okay so sometimes I, I, I don't really know exactly when it actually does the, the migration. Uh, I go, I'm go i going to click on my summary, everything is done. So let's check our MySQL database and see if this database was, was actually migrated. So I'm going to go local instance at this point. It's going to prompt for password. Okay, no. So now if you go to schemas, are they look at the on the left hand side you're going to see schemas and you can see my db with migrated now this is a full flight ms uh, mysql database is completely transformed migrated from ms sql to mysql now these is tables we have a, a tbl student again i can just select and you see that it displays all the items there okay and if you go to views so i'm going to refresh the views as well so somehow it seems I did not migrate the views, but maybe that's, I failed to click on the checkbox. So, but for now you can see that the database migrated successfully. This is how to migrate a database from MSSQL to MySQL. I'm going to stop here. In the next lesson, I'm going to try to migrate MySQL to MSSQL. There are some other, other databases out there. We have Oracle database, PostgreSQL, H2 database that's in memory anyway. And we have other databases. We are going to also try to migrate across between the different databases and see how it works. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Remember, slam the subscribe button, activate notification by clicking on the bell icon beside the right subscribe button. And we'll see you in the next lesson.